Take a look at the picture on the screen. Here, a convex mirror and a pencil has been taken. Now perform a simple experiment with the pencil and the convex mirror. Keep the pencil in front of the convex mirror and move it in front of the convex mirror and back again. You will notice that as you do so, the size of the image of the pencil changes. Now how do you think we can map this diagrammatically? Let us find out what happens if we keep the pencil far away from the convex mirror and if we keep the pencil close to the convex mirror. Now the first instance that we consider is the pencil being kept very far away from the convex mirror. Now as you will recall, the pencil or the object that is kept very far away is placed at infinity. Now what happens to the light rays that are incident on the convex mirror from infinity? These light rays are parallel to one another and also parallel to the principal axis of the convex mirror. So once these parallel light rays are reflected from the convex mirror, they diverge. After diverging, they seem to be diverging from a point or they seem to be coming from a point that lies behind the convex mirror. This point is known as the focus of the convex mirror. So what can we say? We can say that when the object has been placed at infinity, the image that is formed is formed at the focus of the convex mirror. This image is virtual because we cannot obtain it on a screen. It is erect and the size of the image is highly diminished. It is very small. Now what happens if we change the position of the pencil? Now the pencil is brought closer to the convex mirror. The pencil is kept at a point that is in between the pole of the convex mirror and infinity. Again we are considering two rays. The first ray is parallel to the principal axis of the convex mirror. After reflection it seems to be coming from a point behind the convex mirror that is the focus. We consider another ray such that it appears to pass through the center of curvature of the convex mirror. After reflection, this ray passes back along its own path. Now when we extrapolate these two rays, we find that they meet at a point behind the mirror. This point where they meet is the point where the image of the pencil is formed. Now let us find out what the characteristics of the image are. We find that when the object is placed anywhere in between infinity and the pole of the mirror, that is anywhere in between this point and infinity, the image formed is always between the pole and focus of the convex mirror. And what about the image characteristics? The image is virtual as it is being formed on the other side of the convex mirror. The image is erect as you can see and the size of the image is diminished. That is the image is smaller than the object. So let us take a quick recap of what happens if we place an object in front of the convex mirror. Now when the object is placed in front of the convex mirror at infinity, we find that the position of the image is at the focus. The size of the image is highly diminished and the image is virtual and erect. And when the position of the object is anywhere in between infinity and the pole of the convex mirror, we find that the position of the image is always in between the pole and its focus. The size of the image as we saw was diminished and the image was virtual and erect. Now consider the picture being shown on the screen. 
This is the rear view mirror of a car. We have learned that the rear view mirror of a car uses a convex mirror. Why is a convex mirror used? Because as we just learned, rays after reflection from a convex mirror diverge or spread outwards. Due to this, the driver sitting in the car will be able to obtain a wide vision or a wide image of what is behind the car. Why? Because the rays are diverging after reflection. This was not possible with the help of a plane mirror. And it is due to this reason that in a rear view mirror, a convex mirror is used.